Hello everybody and welcome to today's video, which is actually going to be the third video in a series based off of the Entity Component System sample projects provided to us by Unity. Now, in order to watch this video, you don't necessarily need to see the two previous ones because this one's gonna be a little bit different, whereas the other ones we're kind of focused on building out the entities component systems as part of our ECS project. This one's actually gonna be focused around something known as subscenes. And while we aren't gonna be doing any programming in this video, I think it's a good idea that you should be at least familiar with the concepts of ECS and kind of what it's all about. If you aren't already, definitely go ahead and check out the video that I made where I just kind of go over what the entity component system is and I talk about some of the main concepts on a high level. So today I'm going to be going over the concept of subscenes, which are a very powerful tool that we can use in Unity and it's especially helpful when we're making large open worlds within the Unity editor. And so these subscenes work hand in hand with the entity component system as all game objects within these subscenes actually going to be converted to entities. And like I mentioned, this video is based off of the Unity ECS sample project, so I'll go ahead and leave a link to that down in the description. I highly recommend that you download that and go ahead and play around with it yourself so you can really familiarize yourself with the entity component system and some of the best practices of how to use it. Hey, if you do find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on Unity Dots and ECS. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into the video. Okay, so over here in Unity, we're gonna be taking a look at the third sample, which is um, gonna be going over the concept of sub scenes. So again, we basically just kind of have this same thing as the previous two videos, where we just have uh, a single cube and then a smaller cube. However, when we click on it, you'll see that it actually kind of selects this whole thing. And you'll notice that over in our hierarchy, we have this uh, thing which is known as a subscene called the rotating cube. So you'll see if we click on this over here in the inspector, of course, it has a transform component as well as a subscene component. And you'll see that it actually points to this scene asset of rotating cube. Now, this rotating cube is actually basically what is known as a subscene and it's sitting in this subscenes folder. It's called rotating cube, it's right here. And if we want, we can actually edit this scene here. So if we click edit, you'll see that we're now basically in the editing mode of the sub scene. So over here in the hierarchy, see that we have the rotating cube and then there's this little drop down arrow. And now under that, you'll see that this is where we see the actual objects within the sub scene. So here we have the rotating cube. Now we can go under that. And then of course we have the child cube. So if we want in our sub scene here, we can say maybe duplicate this rotating cube. So now we have two of them and then we can just kind of drag this out to the side here, just like that. So now when we're kind of done editing this sub scene here, we can go back to our rotating cube. And then on the sub scene script, we can just go ahead and hit save. And then now we can close this. So we're no longer editing it anymore. And so you see now that we have, when we have the rotating cube selected, now we have both these kind of double cube things here, part of our sub scene when that sub scene is selected. Now, one thing to point out, this sub scene isn't necessarily like a parent for these game objects. So if we were to stay kind of move around the transform of the rotating cube component, the child objects don't actually move. And in fact, over in the inspector, we get a little warning saying scene transform values are not applied to scene child transforms, but rotating cube has an offset transform. So we can just hit clear and you'll see that it resets the position data that we have here. And of course, same thing with rotation and we can just hit that button to clear out the value. So now let me go back and start from the beginning and just show you how to create Create one of these new sub scenes. So over here, just in our hierarchy, you can just go ahead and right click and we'll go down to the new sub scene and we can just say empty scene. And then here it's gonna ask us where we want to save it. And we just of course have this sub scene folder and we can just call this rotating cube two. So go ahead and save that. And um, so you'll see we now have this rotating cube two over here as well as this rotating cube two over here. Now this sub scene doesn't have anything in it and you'll see that it is actually check marked, which means it is um, essentially open for editing. We can uncheck this and now it's closed for editing. So kind of similar to how we went to over here 
and hit edit and close, you can accomplish the exact same thing by just hitting this check mark here and then you'll see all the stuff pops up from under it. So again, we'll just go back to the rotating cube and we'll hit the check mark here. So now let's say we want to add um, a cube to the rotating cube to sub scene. Of course, you can just right click and go to 3D object and cube. Now you see that this just creates a cube just kind of within the main world here. It's not within the sub scene, it's part of the main scene. So a couple ways we can go about adding this to the sub scene is we can say grab this cube and then drop it down in to the rotating cube two sub scene. Of course, we can uncheck this and it's going to close it for editing, but it's just gonna say, hey, do you wanna save these changes? And we'll go ahead and save the changes. Now, to give you an example with these extremely crude graphics here, um, the real advantage of sub scenes comes into how we can kinda enable and disable things on the fly. So now, for example, we have this rotating cube sub scene here, and we can just say that these are maybe some buildings and um, this over here, this is our player. Now, maybe we really wanna like focus on our player right now. So we can actually come over to this rotating cube. Of course, you can just uncheck that and it disables that whole sub scene. So now we can uh, come in here and we can kind of focus on our player and do some work within the sub scene. So again, we can just hit this checkbox, um, go over here, we can kind of uh, maybe move its position around a little bit. We're done. Of course, we can uncheck and make sure just to save those changes. Of course, then we can go ahead and re-enable this rotating cube sub scene here. Now, another way to accomplish the same thing, which might be a little bit better practice actually, instead of just uh, sort of disabling this component here, is you see there's this button called unload rotating cube, and this will unload all the assets in the sub scene here. So you'll see that it's not, you know, within the scene view or the game view anymore. So it's not uh, getting in our way or anything like that. However, when we do go hit the play button, you'll see that it reloads this sub scene here. So they're they're back in here. Now, another thing with these sub scenes is basically everything is part of the entity component system. So even though we just added just this standard basic cube here, if we go and edit it, you'll see there's no convert to entity or anything like that on it. However, you're not gonna be able to tell by the name, but actually is converted to an entity um, just kind of within the editor here. So that's kind of cool. So of course we can go into here and add like a rotation speed for each and maybe for radians per second, we can do negative two. Um, and then we'll say, you know, just move the cube around. We'll go ahead and hit the play button and you'll see kind of a, an, a little bit of an interesting behavior happens here. Up in the scene view, you can see that these cubes are rotating. However, this one cube is not. But if you go into the game view, you'll see that it is rotating, um, which is kind of interesting. But basically the reason for that is because we have this sub scene open for editing. So again, we just have to close that and save our changes. You see now here when we hit the play button, it'll go ahead and start spinning the cube up in our sub scene here. And just to kind of show you a little bit more about these sub scenes. So if we wanted to say go to the rotating cube, we can double click that and it's actually going to open up the actual scene and you'll see that we can't actually see these cubes because there's of course no camera or there's no um, lighting components within the scene at all it's literally just these you know simple cube objects here of course we can come in here we can maybe uh, duplicate this and create another cube so now we have three so we can save this sub scene and then go back to our main scene and you'll see that now uh, because our sub scene had been updated. Of course, we now have these three objects within this scene here. Now, again, this is a pretty boring example, just kind of, you know, some rotating cubes and some sub scenes. But like I was saying earlier, these sub scenes are really, really useful if you have, you know, like massive scenes where you have all sorts of different you know, maybe sections, like if you have a big world and it takes a long time for your computer to load these things when you're just kind of um, moving around the editor. So it can be really nice to kind of unload a bunch of those assets and just focus on what you're focusing on. Um, one of the big examples that comes to mind for me is when Unity put out their mega city demo and it was this like vast sprawling city and there's all sorts of things going on. There's all kinds of buildings and cars flying around and they use sub scenes to their advantage so that they could, you know, kind of break things out into their own little sub scenes. And it makes it just a whole lot easier to manage. And it's something that you should really, really start implementing into your development if you're going to be making, um, you know, really complex and dynamic worlds.
And so that is the basics of how we can create and use subscenes within the Unity game engine. Of course, this works hand in hand with the entity component system. So I highly recommend checking out some more videos on my channel if you want to uh, get some more knowledge about how to start using the entity component system. Also, I'd suggest that you download these sample projects from Unity and play around with them yourself to further familiarize yourself with the concepts that I spoke about in today's video. By the way, if you did find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the entity component system and data oriented technology stack from Unity. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.